How you Hi. doing out there? Welcome to a brand new series on Adobe Live. I like to call it Better Know a Brush. What we're going to be doing today is diving into the deep world of Photoshop brushes and helping you use them to improve your artwork. I'm Renee DeCherry. I'm the marketing manager for drawing and painting here at Adobe. And I'm lucky enough to have illustrator Natalie Murrow with me today. She's fabulously talented. And I'm so stoked that she's going to share her top five brushes with you five different brushes she likes to use in her artwork and what she uses them for so that you can better understand how to make your artwork sing. Now, I'm going to have Natalie introduce herself, but while we're doing that, I'd like everybody in the chat, because there's a lot of awesome people there already, I see. Can you guys drop in your favorite brush so that we can start talking about it? And then don't forget, we actually do giveaways here on Adobe Live. So you have to be logged in to be a part of the giveaway. And we're going to be giving away sticker packs from Sticker Mule, which means you get to make your own stickers. So definitely log in, OK? And get ready for that giveaway. And Natalie, tell the fine people about yourself. Hi. Uh, so yeah, like Renee said, I'm an illustrator and designer and live here in San Francisco. I graduated from Rhode Island School of Design in 2012 with a BFA in Industrial Design. Mm. And since then, I've been working in the mobile gaming industry at a company called Fingerprint Play, mm. uh, designing educational apps for kids. Um, and so at my job, I do a lot of graphic design, uh, but I was always interested in getting more involved in illustration. Uh, so over the past few years, I spent a lot of time um, learning and practicing digital illustration. I started out with a basic understanding of illustrating in Photoshop, but I did learn a lot through just online tutorials, Google searches, and just a lot of trial and error too. Yeah. Um, and I love digital art, but sometimes it can be hard to recreate the natural look of traditional art. It's like the hardest thing, yeah, honestly. Yeah, definitely. So I love to use brushes and textures to kind of recreate the handmade feel. Mm -hmm. um, Especially since a lot of my art involves a lot of organic motions that can really be accentuated by the right brush. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd love to share some tips and tricks with you guys with my five favorite brushes today. And I think um, you had something you were going to show off that had like them yeah. listed, right? So maybe if we could go to your screen. Whoa, look at the doggy. I don't know if you guys know, but I love dogs. Dogs are like, like basically my favorite thing. And this is a Bernie, right? Bernie's Mountain Dog? Mm -hmm. ah. Yeah. So these are your five brushes you're going to be using and talking about. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about each one real quick? Yeah, of course. Um, so they're kind of listed in the order that I will be drawing with them today. Mm -hmm. um, two of the my favorite brushes are actually by Kyle T. Webster. Kyle! Woo! Yeah. Everybody knows Kyle, right? Yeah. Like, that's <laughs> like He's like the brush master. Yeah, you can download his brushes on Creative Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I use the animator pencil for um, my underdrawings, yep. and it's a very important process to kind of get right before you start rendering. Yes, it is. Um, I use his soft pastel for everything. I use it in like, <laughs> all of my art. Um, I mean, it looks like it could be clouds, it could be like foliage, it could be just, it could be fur. Mm -hmm. It's very natural feeling. Um, yeah, and then the fur texture brush is one that I actually downloaded from online. Um, oh yeah, Mike Yamada, right? Yeah. And so Mike Yamada is a artist at Disney, and he's got a Gumroad as well, so that um, you can purchase his brushes and use that one. But you edited this one yourself? Yeah, um, I kind of added some of my own adjustments and textures to it, um, cool. and I use it a lot for fur. Um, and then. The next one is my rough edged brush. It's also one that I had downloaded online, but kind of made my own adjustments to. Totally. Um, so it has the feathering on the edges and tapers that I use a lot for erasing, actually. Nice. Um, and I'll show you how I use that later. Um, and then the soft round noise brush is um, just a brush that I use for kind of finishing touches and mm. to add a little bit of depth. That's cool. Well, this is a great spread of brushes. Um, and yeah, this is super awesome. I can't wait to see how you use each of them. So as you're using them, I'm going to ask you a couple questions about how you think they're best used and what you might edit and all that kind of stuff. And let's just get started. Why don't you all go right. ahead and start doodling? And I think yeah. you already started it, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. look. So I'm going to be drawing the same Bernese Mountain Dog in a okay. different pose. Um, 
I guess I wanted to quickly talk about my process too. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness, look at these sketches. Yeah, so before I actually get a character in mind, I'll try out kind of a bunch of different shapes and mm -hmm. facial expressions and sizes um, to kind of get the right dog that I'm looking for. <laughs> so um, I kind of landed on this guy down yeah. here, kind of a big, big guy with big paws and mm -hmm. kind of boxy looking oh, shapes. Um, so yeah, then I did an underdrawing, mm -hmm. and all of these are used um, with the animator pencil that I used. A That's ton. cool. Um, yeah, so for the underdrawing, since I already have it done, what yep. I do is I set the opacity um, to about 30, 25 percent, and then. Okay. Set it to multiply, which means you can see through the layer. Yeah, yeah. So multiply, what it does is it actually does a mathematical equation of the top color versus the bottom color. Like that's literally the science behind what it's doing. And zero is white, which is why it just shines through white. So if you're using a sketch that you took a photograph of, you can use the multiply mode to pretend like the white of the paper is not there. Cool. Um, yeah, so let's see. I. This is a semi-new feature, but having brushes being able to be organized in fingers <laughs> has really helped my life a lot. Yeah, it's pretty nice, right? Because yeah. I know that a lot of people like to use brushes, but they tend to only use five, right? Like, you collect mm. them. They're like colors. There's so many colors in the rainbow, but come on, how many colors do you really use? Yeah, exactly. Brushes um, so, are the same way. Yeah, I have my favorites organized. Um, I just pulled up my uh, pastel brush. <laughs> and before we logged on, I started oh, yeah, doodling you, a little bit. I saw you. You were drawing um, a little bit before we went live. OK, that's yeah. awesome. So um, yeah, you just go ahead and draw. In fact, yeah. you know, the animator pencil, what's really cool about that is it sort of harkens back to the days of animation. Um, when they didn't have computers. So I don't know if you guys know this, but they always used a blue pencil. And the reason is because when you photocopy something that's blue, it disappears. And this, there's just like a certain shade of blue that like a f most photo photocopiers don't even see. And so I'm pretty sure that's why he named it the animator pencil, because it's so light and sort of like, you know, good for detail and light drawing and just doing your little sketch. It's awesome. It it feels like a natural pencil if you're using it. And I also use a uh, Cintiq tablet, which really helps. Like, oh. it just feels like I'm drawing yeah. in, on paper. Um, Absolutely. Like, you, you have to have a drawing device, whether it be a beautiful Wacom tablet like this that doesn't have a screen or your gorgeous Cintiq. It's super important to have something to draw on because don't, don't use a mouse, a mouse, my friends. Like, you got to make it real. You got to really draw. Um, so yeah, what I'm doing is kind of just blocking out the color and mm -hmm. shape for his body. Um, as and this I'm, is that pastel brush, right? Yes, this is a pastel brush. And as I'm painting in, I'm kind of going with the grain of his fur. Oh, yeah. So that it kind of has that flow to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be subtle, but it makes a little bit of a difference. Well, you can already see it. Yeah, like his yeah. little fringe on his leg there. Yeah. So I think we had some favorite brushes in the chat, but I'm sorry that they've all scrolled off. <laughs> Friends, thank you for submitting your favorite brushes <laughs> that I didn't even look at. But I see a lot of familiar faces in the chat. I see Tony Helms. I also see John in the chat as well, and Jeff Osborne. Yeah, and Jeff says, friends don't let friends draw with mouses. And that is true. <laughs> Love your wrist. Love yourself. Use something that's more natural and better for you. Very true. Although I actually still use my mouse. A no, lot. <laughs> but you say you do For graphic other design, things. right? So like uh, I yes. can, I'm cool with that. But I'm actually so far gone that I have to use a tablet for everything. Yeah, I'm spoiled, definitely. <laughs> um, but I like to have the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm starting to think about using my left hand for stuff just to save my right hand, actually. <laughs> yeah. That's super great. So, I mean, this brush has got such good texture to it, and it's one that's available to you guys as Creative Cloud members. So you can go and get it for yourself and use this exact same brush. I really like the crispiness of it. Like, it feels like you're working on a textured um, piece of paper. Yeah, definitely. It has kind of a grit, gritty feel. Yeah. Um, 
And well, I like when you can kind of see through to the white of the paper behind. Yep. Um, especially kind of these white streaks that I'll actually accentuate a little bit more later. Mm. Um. And I love dogs. And that was a natural fit. I was like, if I'm gonna do a brush show, I gotta get somebody who does dogs because dogs are basically my favorite thing in the whole world. So, all right, what is your favorite breed of dog? Um, let's see. I love wiener dogs. I Aww, think they're so cute. We actually sense. used to have one um, golden retriever wiener dog mix. So oh, wow. It's pretty adorable. But. That sounds super cute. Yeah. It's hard for me to pick a favorite. Chat, yeah. if you've got a favorite dog, drop it in the chat. And don't forget to log in because sometime there's going to be a chance to win some stickers. We've got some people who love huskies. Me, I love any dog that is fluffy, basically, which is like all dogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the fluff is fun to draw. <laughs> it is fun. And I really, you know, I'm watching how you're doing that directionally, and it's really important to give it sort of um, that textured look. Like, he really, you can see his tail, like the fur on his tail, the way that you're drawing it. Yeah. Um, and it also helps to kind of give it a more natural look, it, yeah. as opposed to just filling it in with the paint bucket tool. Um, you can really see kind of like the natural flow of my hand motion as I'm drawing, so. And that's kind of the difference, right? Is like, if you just use the paint bucket tool, it would just be a flat color. Mm -hmm, exactly. And it looks digital. Like, you know it looks digital. Like, it, it just doesn't like, it doesn't have personality. Yeah. Sometimes going out of the lines. We've got some votes in the chat for Yorkies and Palms and Pugs and yes. Frenchies and Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Yes. They're all good dogs. I love Pugs. I did a version of Pugs, which was really fun. They're so kind of cute, ugly looking. <laughs> yeah, and Natalie's got a lot of amazing art on her Instagram. So, you know, you should definitely head over to Natalie's Instagram and check it out. I'm pretty sure that our awesome community manager will drop it into the chat for you. She's at Natalie Murrow, and she's got so much cute doggy art and just really adorable drawings, honestly. Cool, so I actually um, kind of already started the eyes, so I can just pop those guys in. What? I That's like amazing. <laughs> yeah, I like to put them on a different layer because I find mm. that I always am adjusting the eyes, especially at the end. So mm. if I have it on a separate layer, it's much easier to kind of go in and make slight adjustments. Now that opens up this question: Do you only work on one layer? I work on multiple layers. Okay. I um, yeah, I definitely need to um, for my process because I end up changing things so much. <laughs> um, Another thing too that I didn't know for a while, which is so silly, but it's a very important like key, uh, just option click is the Ooh, eyedropper tool so that yes. you can grab the color really fast yeah. while you're working. Yeah. And I always have a color palette up here mm. so that I have the colors ready to go and I can get the exact one quickly. That's really smart. I tend to color pick off of my drawing but then yeah. you don't have that pure color. So exactly. I, that's es why it's nice. Especially with textures like this, um, because some of the white of the background is coming through, you're yeah. not gonna get the pure color. Totally. Sometimes when you click anywhere on the drawing. Um, right, like all those little white bits, that's yeah. gonna mess it up. It's not gonna be the pure color if you try to color pick. Yeah, exactly. Jeff Osborne wants to know if there's a sweet spot for layers because he tends to lose control past 20. And like, yeah. I say just give up. Just, <laughs> just lose control, Jeff. Um, I have yet to find the sweet spot. I'm always um, kind of asking myself the same question, but <laughs> what I do uh, a lot is kind of organize them into folders once it gets kind of unruly. Um, so for organize. instance, the eyes have like I don't know, five different layers already, and I put them into a folder called eyes, and then just kind of leave it like that. Did you see that? Oh, yeah. It's raining brushes, and you know what that means, my friends? That means it's time for chat and win. Now, you need to log in, okay? Be logged in on Behance.com, and you can be entered into a drawing to win 
uh, I'm sorry, 100 free stickers. I forgot for a sec. 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. And that means you can make any sticker you want. Literally, you can make your own stickers. It's super sweet. So log in, drop your favorite dog breed into the chat, and you will be entered into a chance to win. The magical computer that runs behind the scenes will pick a winner. But you gotta start chatting. Do it. Chat now. <laughs> Chat now, my friends. What's your favorite dog breed? We've got some first timers here. So this is how it works, my friends. You have to be logged in, put your brushes in there, and you're gonna win. And any moment now, that magical computer machine that selects it, our AI that controls everything we do here at Adobe, will select a winner. We've got pugs, we've got golden retrievers, we've got Sharpays, schnauzers, those are all good dogs. Pomskis, what's a Pomsky? I think it's a Pomeranian Husky. They're <sighs> super cute. That's too cute. <laughs> that should be illegal. Yeah. That's not, that's not okay. <gasps> Here we go, Dagny and Milani. You have won 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. Awesome. Can I get one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't need all 100, do you? All right, so that was our first chat one. There's gonna be another one. So if you didn't get picked this time, stay strong, my friends. There's still another chance. All right, so now, are you still using the same brush here? I am. Oh, I cool. am using this brush for kind of a lot of the <laughs> segment of time. Um, That's okay. But yeah, I gotta kind of get the facial features down first mm -hmm. um, so that I kind of can see him without the under sketch, yeah. which kind of gets in the way sometimes. So. It does, doesn't it? Because yeah. you don't really want the lines to show through, but you want to be true to your sketch. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I really do put everything on uh, several layers. <laughs> All those lips. I'm glad to see that though, because I tend to be totally unorganized with my layers. Usually, I've just got like whatever, and I like I'm always clicking through the layer stack, like trying to find like whatever the right layer is. Yeah, it's definitely a process, and <laughs> whatever works for you. I mean, I know people who also just work on one layer and have beautiful artwork, so it's totally up to you. The stress of working on one layer is if you want to change something, like you mentioned. Like, what if you wanted to change his beautiful blue eyes to a green? I know, yeah, that's exactly why I, I use separate layers, because I'm constantly changing my things. Yeah. Do you find yourself changing your brushes midstream though? Because I, I don't, like usually I figure out what brushes I wanna use, I kinda put them aside into like a special spot or I like have them like in one folder and I really don't edit them while I'm working with them. Um, yeah, I always am going to kind of the same like three brushes <laughs> and I, obviously like now I'm just using the same one. Totally. Um, but yeah, so just grouping these layers so that they don't get too out of hand, and I'll yeah. call it the snout layer. Um, cool, so now that I have kind of his face mm -hmm. lined out, mm -hmm. I'll start um, drawing some of the line art that's gonna go on top. Oh, okay, so you're really gonna define him with some line art. Yeah, cool. so I'll put a new layer in and call it lines. Um, I'm gonna change the color of it later, so right now I'm just gonna use black because okay. it's kind of easy to kind of pop out and see easier. Right. Um, but you wouldn't wanna use black for the final color. Yeah. Um, and tell the fine people why. Yeah, so I, eventually he will be multiple colors and so yeah. I want the lines to match whatever color is on his coat. Yeah. Um, so, in the end, I will do a clipping mask and kind of on top of my line layer and mm -hmm. then I can color easily beneath that. Which is super sweet effect because coloring your line art really sort of, I don't know, it makes it, you can still see the lines but it feels more integrated. Yes, definitely. Those are lovely sort of strokes. And I'm seeing your industrial designer come through. Yeah. Because this is a trick I learned from an industrial designer as well, that you, carefully try to get the stroke and you keep trying until you get it. Yeah, I'm constantly hitting Command Z because I can't get like the you, exact you, perfect stroke that I want. So you don't go back in and you don't erase. So like for me, a non-industrial designer, what I used to do is I would try to get the line and then I'd go back in and like 
carefully go back and forth and erase it and redraw on it and erase it and redraw on it mm -hmm. instead of you know making the stroke go away. And as you know, the line becomes unconfident. It, you know, yes. it looks shaky, it looks, it doesn't look like you drew it in one stroke. Definitely, that's very important and it definitely helps it to have that kind of flowing natural look um, yeah. of traditional art that is what I'm kind of going for always. Totally, and I love that you are an industrial designer um, or that you came out of school with that as a degree because it's like the secret art, like, degree. I, people yeah. don't realize that like that's what you learn to do is you learn to draw, at least I didn't realize and like how precise and beautiful your drawings can really look when you use those techniques. Yeah, definitely. Um, I actually went into industrial design interested in toy design. And so oh. I was always interested in the characters and then I just found that illustration is kind of more my thing these days. Totally, totally. Um, even in industrial design, they would always say that my drawings looked very illustrative. So. Oh. Is that like a diss? Is that like yeah. a secret diss? Yeah, because like a lot of um, industrial design lines are straight and like very perfect, and mine are much more curvy and Come on. illustrative looking. So. Well, now you know how to insult an industrial designer, my friends. Yes. <laughs> So actually, um, I saw some questions in here on which one she's using. The animator pencil she used to do her d her sketch. So we didn't see that because she actually did that while we were off the air. But the one that she's using right now is that pastel, correct? Yes. yes. It's, it's Kyle's pastel brush. What was it called? I'm sorry. Uh, da, da, da. Soft pastel tooth. Yeah. And that's from the dry media set by Kyle Webster. He has a ton of brushes for dry media, and they're all great, but this one's definitely my favorite, I think. Yeah, Maybe absolutely. just because I'm so used to using it. <laughs> it's just such a gorgeous brush. It's got such nice sort of texture to it, but it's still really precise. So Jeff wants to know more about the difference between industrial design and like an illustration degree. Can you think of anything um, else that you feel like is? Yeah, so in industrial design, I don't know if most people are like super familiar with what it even is. It's product design. Um, so so and, iPhones, cameras, yeah, cars. Anything mass produced um, that's kind of um, 3D object. Um, but also it's just a lot of design thinking too. So like processes can be uh, improved and a lot of design research involved. Um, it's a little bit different than purely illustration, but. Sounds a little boring. <laughs> I just want to talk about dogs. Hey, I think you switched. <laughs> I think you switched brushes. Yes, I did. Sorry. <gasps> this is... Don't be sorry. That's just very exciting <laughs> to me. The So what I'm doing now is kind of giving him a little bit more texture. Okay. So the brush that I, I'll actually make new layers so you can see yeah. the brush. Um, it's my rough edged brush that oh, yeah. I primarily just use, actually the flow is kind of low right now, but um, I use it uh, for erasing because it doesn't have the hard edge. Yeah. Um, so the erasing looks more normal, or it doesn't look like, oh, I just took a, yeah. an eraser. It looks like actually it's got the same texture as I the can, brush you used. Yeah, I actually even show you, like yeah, this is the, just with the soft round, or the, hard round that's kind of one of the basics and it looks very, oh like, it's so different yeah very stark <laughs> yeah um so i definitely like to make it like a little bit more natural and again um i am going with the grain of the fur yep so i'm just trying to get some more of that texture and this process is kind of just it's kind of a technique that I started using recently and... Erasing like this? Yeah, so it's kind of an intermediate process. It's not mm. going to ultimately look like this. Totally, but. totally. Well, I love that part whenever you're still working on it and it's like not exactly like there yet and you're like, no, stay with me, friends. It's yeah. gonna get somewhere, I promise. <laughs> yeah, when I people promise. watch me work, I'm always like, it's not done. <laughs> you can't look at it yet, but... <laughs> don't look, don't look. I saw a question up there about industrial design and what it's really for. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit while Natalie's working on her, her fun erasing there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it, it, usually they call it design sketching or ID sketching. And it's mm -hmm. just about um, really getting product shapes and, and beautiful gradients and, you know, it, 
it's just a really cool process to watch an industrial designer draw these really precise edges and corners of just about anything. So people design vacuums and refrigerators and yeah. mugs and everything. So basically everything you've ever seen has had an industrial designer touch it from this laptop to the Wacom that you're drawing on. Some industrial designers sketched it out first, even before they 3D modeled it to sort of figure out what it was gonna look like. We actually had a lot of drying practice in industrial design. At school, we had um, these big, like three foot tall rolls of paper that would roll across the room, and we had to draw cubes for, uh, <laughs> for and hours. And ellipses, right? And cubes and ellipses, and you got um, really good at kind of like being very precise with your lines and using like your full body gesture to draw. Yeah. Um, let me yeah. find, I, there's this awesome book um, by Scott Robertson called How to Draw. And that book, let me find a really cool, we can share it with the world here. Um, so I'm just on Amazon, that's not the most amazing thing to show off, but um, let me zoom in a little bit. Why is that not zooming in? My page won't zoom in, I'm sorry my friends, but How to Draw by Scott Robertson. He's a famous industrial designer, and me as an illustrator, going through this book opened up so much, like a world of like how to actually sketch and design, because he teaches you how to do things in perspective that I didn't even know were possible, like how to cut a box in half in perspective, or how to make things equal in perspective, and how to draw ellipses all day long, because that's what industrial designers do. They draw ellipses. And I'm sure Natalie can tell you all about it. But the idea is to get a perfect circle in just one go, because you're doing so many circles. You can't just like, you can't spend all your time making circles. So that instead, you draw circles all day. Yeah. <laughs> Um, cool, so I, I actually switched back brushes to the pastel again. Awesome. And what I did is I kind of made it a little bit smaller so it's kind of um, more hair-like. Mm, um, okay. And I'm going over the erased marks in the same direction and it kind oh, of gives wow. it that fur-like texture. You'll That's see. super cool, what a cool technique. So you erased the brush and you're going back over it with a brush. Yeah, and sometimes even just like switching brushes because um, like if you're erasing with the same brush and going back over it with the same brush, because it has the same textures, yeah. it kind of gets lost, so. Totally, so you want a different texture. You don't yes. want the same one, is what you're saying. Yes, exactly, so that it kind of pops it out and makes it look a little bit different. Oh, that's so cool, what a great technique. Yeah, and again, like all of these are kind of just me learning and playing around with it. And, yeah. Um, I'm always trying like different combinations of brushes and practice and error and seeing what I like and don't like and yeah. And you know, I noticed that this brush in particular doesn't have a pressure sensitivity to it. You know, like, and you can change each brush to be whatever you want. But I guess what I'm trying to say is there wasn't much of a taper. And I normally want yeah. like an extreme taper. <laughs> um, there's pressure sensitivity, I, I can actually, yeah, yeah it, like, doesn't have a, too much of a taper at the end, but, um, but yeah, it has been good with just the pressure sensitivity, which well, is right. kind of what I. Right, right, right. There's something about taper. Like if a brush doesn't have taper, I have to add it, and I don't know why. Like I'm like that, but that's how I'm built with brushes. Like yeah, <laughs> I've got to have it. Yeah, it kind of it. Can, it actually changes angles. Um, you can kind of oh, see. Really? Um, oh, so it's got, oh yeah, I see it. It's got um, tilt. Yeah, so I like that actually. And I hadn't really used it much before, but now I love it because it really just does make it feel so much yeah. more natural, like you're drying with a real pastel. Totally. Sam wants to know if there's a portfolio review today, and I'm sorry, Sam, not on during this segment. This is just an hour-long segment to talk all about brushes, but there is another chat and win where we're gonna be giving away stickers, 100 free stickers, and you can make anything you want. So stay tuned, make sure to be logged in, and we're gonna have a magical giveaway sometime soon. Cool. This is a really cool technique. I really yeah. love it. And that's such a great tip about brushes. Don't erase with the same brush as you're trying to fill back in. Because of course, like if it's got the same sort of like crispy green, mm -hmm. you won't be doing nothing. 
Yeah, and even just kind of like painting over or adding more texture with the same brush. Yeah. Um, because it's using like the same path for yeah. the same texture that's inside the brush, especially with textured brushes, it's just going over the same texture. So it's kind of hard to differentiate. Um, it's just not gonna do anything for you, really. Yeah, exactly. Super cool. We've got a couple people joining late. Um, so one more time, I'm gonna give you my Better Know a Brush pitch. I've got Natalie Murrow here. She's an incredible illustrator who draws adorable dogs. And she's talking about her five favorite brushes in Photoshop and how to use them for your drawing advantage. And don't forget, if you're a Creative Cloud member, we have hundreds of brushes for you. They're totally included in Creative Cloud, and a lot of them are made by the brush master, Kyle Webster. And Kyle's well known on the internet for his incredible brushes, and in fact, Natalie's using a couple of them today. Yeah. I and actually so used his before um, they were on Creative Cloud. I yeah. just downloaded them from his website, but yeah, That's he's cool. uh, famous in the art world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Paul wants to know if you rotate the canvas, if the texture changes angles too. Um, but I think he's right. It's static to the screen, isn't it? Um, I actually am not sure about that. Um, I never so rotate. like if you mirror it? Like, or like if you rotate yeah. your canvas here in Photoshop. I never do that oh. in desktop Photoshop. You can do that though now, right? I think so. Do you love how I don't yeah. know? I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I am I never rotate my Cintiq. I always just keep it in the same spot just because, I don't know, I'm stuck in my habits, but I'm sure it would make my life a little bit easier sometimes. <laughs> I just move my body. Yeah, I just move my body too, and you've got the 22 Cintiq, so I would just rotate the Cintiq because it's got such a great, like, rotation already built in. Mm -hmm. Tim says that there's a legend that if you say brush three times in front of a mirror, Kyle appears. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> brushes, brushes, brushes. Cool. That's really great. He's so cute. Almost done. This part kind of takes the longest. Just No, it's great. Blocking in. The it's colors. really like rewarding to just watch you like work. Honestly, I'm loving it. And you know what? I saw Robzilla in the chat. And that begs the question, Robzilla, what are your favorite brushes? Now you usually draw in vectors, so that makes me even more intrigued to see what your favorite brushes are. Yeah. Robzilla is a favorite here at Adobe. Cool. He makes a lot of cool vector illustrations, especially of the warriors. I don't know if you're into sports, but. Yeah, that's awesome. I love vector art too. I've done a lot of that um, in my past too, especially with the some of the graphic design stuff I do at work too is a lot of Illustrator. I find it hard because it's such a different mindset. It is. It really is. Um, I if I'm doing something, I usually have to have do an under sketch in Photoshop and take it over. Exactly. That's how I am too. Yeah. Like I can't just start from nothing and start constructing vectors. Right. I, I need a sketch. Cool. So now that I've got all of his hairs in, mm -hmm. I'm gonna start adding the color, the differentiated color, because Bernie's Mountain Dogs have white and brown right? and black. It's tricolor, right? I think yeah. that's what they call it. So um, just because I'm using a white for his fur, I'm going to turn on this green back layer so that mm. I can see it better. OK. Um, that's a pro tip. Have a background layer. Yeah. And so I'm going to add a new layer and create a clipping mask for it. So. Um, I'll start out with the black, actually, for his fur. And because it's a clipping mask, I can just go kind of outside the lines, making sure I'm getting all of his body, mm -hmm. and just fill it in. And this way, because I did all of the work to get the texture on the, on the base layer, then I don't have to uh, kind of remake the texture in that what? color. So. What? You need to go through that one more time so that the people at home understand what you just did. Yes. So she's making a clipping mask. Yeah, so right here, um, I'll do it again. Um, you have to make a new layer and right click on that layer. Okay. And then press create clipping mask. Right. And then you are free to draw within boundaries of this shape. Um, so it's going to stick to the doggy now. You're going to erase now is basically what you're telling me, right? Um, actually, I'm just adding in, let's see, I'll do the white because so, it's easier to see. But 
So I can scribble and be like outside of Whoa, the lines, but right. um, but it'll stay inside in, inside of him. So yeah, that's uh, so great. That. So all that work that you did doing all the beautiful little scrapies, it paid off because you're still using those yeah, right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's so cool. And so then I will be kind of just doing the same sort of motion, brushing mm -hmm. with the same brush. Um, in the direction of his fur, so. Right. For the whites. And that's really important to make it look like he's really got fur. If you just dropped yes. the like a, a plain nine point round brush and just started filling it in, it would just be blocks of color. It would look like the background. Exactly. Um, so getting the right brush and being consistent with kind of like the size of the textures as well is really mm. important sometimes. Um, I I set the texture on the brush so that it scales with my, um, when I scale the brush up, it doesn't scale the texture also. Oh, whoa, that's a cool tip that I actually didn't know about. I'm gonna um, write that down. Actually, because yeah, that, Kyle's brushes all do that already, but if you're making your own, then um, set the texture so that it's not scaling. Okay, because um, otherwise it'll get bigger. So say you've got like a leaf pattern. Yes, exactly. And if you scaled it up, the leaves would then be huge, but maybe you just want more leaves, but they're still the same size. Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm getting your, <laughs> I'm putting down what you're picking up. Cool. That's um, really cool. Yeah, so in terms of kind of my stylization, I like to have a very kind of organic movement throughout my pieces, even if this isn't exactly how the fur texture would look on a Bernese Mountain Dog. <laughs> um, I want it to kind of exaggerate it in a yeah. way so that it kind of makes your eye move with the motion of the drawing itself. Well, so. That's what's more, it's, it's about creating a successful drawing. It's yeah. not necessarily about being true to life. It's about having fun. And if this is fun, then you need to do it. <laughs> exactly. And um, I use reference, but sometimes it's I get caught by using reference, and I'll be looking at it too yep. much. And when I just do it for my head, sometimes I just uh, feel like it's easier. <laughs> Here's a kicker that I also hate. When you really work hard on something, usually it's not good. But when you're like, oh, I got 10 minutes, <laughs> crappy sketch, and then you're like, wow, that's really good. Oh my gosh, I have that happen all the time. <laughs> I hate that, I absolutely hate that. And it just has to do with, I think, your mood, mm -hmm. and like, Your yeah. looseness, too. Yeah. Like, sometimes you can, especially with digital illustration, because you can erase and start over again so many times, you can really get lost. Yeah, stuck in something and overwork a piece to death. Oh my gosh, overwork is my biggest like problem actually. I overwork everything way too yeah. much, and that's like my I can tell like that's my big, next big hurdle is to like get over overworking. It's hard, and I still do it a lot, but I like to kind of make sure I can go back and kind of like redo some of my brush strokes um, just quickly yeah. and kind of get the right. Um, motion that I want with it. And, and I feel like I can hear your industrial designer coming through with these comments, you know? Like those are industrial designer sort of like, I wanna make sure the movement is right, the lines are right. And so yeah. if you're interested in, in getting better at your line work, industrial design and that how to draw book, definitely check it out. It'll really teach you some stuff that, it blew my mind as an illustrator. I had no idea you could do this sort of technical drawing, honestly. Um, we had a couple comments in the chat. I'm gonna, uh -huh. I'm gonna talk to one. Jeff Osborne. Oh no! First, we're gonna do chat and win. Oh my gosh! It's raining brushes. So friends, it is time for you to chat and win. In the chat, put your favorite color. Let's let's do color for now. And if you are selected, you are gonna win a hundred stickers from Sticker Mule. And I hope you'll give me one because. Oh my goodness, I love stickers. I have a huge sticker addiction. So in just a few minutes, the robot that controls us all here at Adobe, the AI that, you know, makes makes everyone do our, our jobs, will give us who the winner is of our amazing stickers. So we got purple, azure, we've got favorite colors of green and blue, tealish blue, yellow and pink. 
green and orange. There's a lot of good colors out there. My favorite color is yellow, which I know is hard to believe because I always wear black, but I really love yellow. It's a good one. It's my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Kathleen says she loves them all. Oh, Susie. Susie, you are the winner of 100 free stickers from Sticker Mule. Congratulations. Thank you so much for being a part of Chat and Win. And I wanted to address a couple comments in the chat, which were super good. Uh, Jeff Osborne wanted to point out that the crew here at Adobe Live is amazing. They're on point. We've got these sweet cameras. We've got all these amazing sort of like the green screen technology and they're switching the stuff that's on the screen. And yeah, these are the best peeps in the whole biz, honestly. They're awesome, awesome crew here at Adobe Live. And then he also mentioned that if this wasn't a dog focused stream, I would walk out. But that's not true. I love kitties. <laughs> I really do. It's just kitties aren't as fun as dogs usually, but I love kitties. Kitties are fun too. I love yeah. them all. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't mean to seem like I'm only into dogs, but <laughs> there's just more to dig in with doggies. You know, there's more colors, there's more breeds, there's more ridiculous behavior. <laughs> Yeah, that's actually the fun part is like the breeds. There's so many different sizes of dogs yeah. and like just they all look so different. Whereas mm -hmm. cats kind of mostly look the same besides mostly. Uh, the different like Persian cats with the cute little smushed faces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, I love you too, kitties. So yes. please don't feel left out. And if you're just joining us, this is Better Know a Brush, a series to dive into brushes and understand how to use them in your artwork. I'm with Natalie Muro here, and she's showing us her five favorite brushes, two of which are Kyle Webster brushes, and you can use them too with Adobe Creative Cloud. They come along free with Photoshop, and you can download them and get these brushes and use them. And you switch to a new color, you're adding the, the other brown into yeah. the skin. So um, I actually have it underneath the white so that I can kind of just be scribbling wherever I want. It's yeah. always just going to be. Well, is this the same layer where you did the um, the clipping mask, or did you make yeah, a new so layer? I have a new layer, but they're all three of these layers are inside the clip the clipping mask. Okay, so cool. So there's this tiny little arrow that points down, and it's yeah. all pointing down to the body layer, yeah. um, which we worked on before. Wow, that's super great. And you know, you know what I noticed, but I didn't at first. Did you do something to the black in his fur, or was it always like a um, brown? It wasn't really black. It was always this sort of brown shade. Um, or maybe see. it's just the screen. I'm I think it at. might be the screen. I haven't changed it from black, but I'm going to. Okay, cool. Um, cool. So almost done with. This Lance part. wants to know how you get access to the Kyle brushes. We've actually got a Spark page that they're going to drop in the chat for you, so you can check that out. It's really simple. When you're in Photoshop, you just use a little drop down that says "Get More Brushes," and it'll take you where you can download more. Cool. Oh, I love that on his tail. He's got like that cute little design, like yeah, kind of stylized a little bit. Yeah, um, kind of mimicking the shape of his tail. Yeah, and it kind of speaks to what you were talking about earlier. Like, sure, maybe it's not scientifically accurate to mm -hmm. do something like that, but it's fun. Yeah, it pushes the stylization, and that's actually kind of the hardest part of being an illustrator. It's kind of like mm -hmm. getting your style and figuring out mm -hmm. what you like and honing it to your own personal likes and dislikes, and it's taken me a long time to kind of hone <laughs> my style, but <laughs> slowly getting there. It's also the fun part, right? Is like yeah. getting getting to know what you like and what you don't like, even though it can be a little discouraging because you got to make a lot of ugly drawings first. Mm -hmm. But you know Definitely. what, friends? <laughs> Fight through those ugly drawings. It's okay. We all got them. It's not a problem. You don't have to show anybody. You just have to get them out. So we had a question about which Kyle's brushes that we're working with, and we've got two of them. We have Kyle's drawing box, which is the um, set that the animator pencil is in. And she used the animator pencil to make her little delicate lines. And then we've also got from Kyle's Dry Media, the soft pastel tooth. And that's what she's mostly been working with to lay down the color and get that nice fur texture. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So. I guess at this point, since I'm mostly done with the fur, I can go back in and kind of do some of the 
final details on his nose and mouth. Cool. Um, so and we got about 15 minutes left in our sort of uh, fun brush show. I just want to cool. throw that out there so we know where we're at. And thank you, Tony, for joining us. Nice to see friendly faces in the chat, always. Um, we got a couple questions. So as you're doing mm -hmm. the details, maybe I'll run those by you. Yeah. What file size do you work in, Ricardo wants to know? Um, I do uh, 300 DPI usually, because mm. that's like good for print, mm -hmm. just in case I ever print anything, which I hardly ever do. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I think this file is probably like 17 inches of uh, 300 DPI. That's a respectable size. You just don't want to like go too too small, right? Yeah, exactly. Because you can always scale down, but you can't scale up easy. And actually, scale up has gotten a lot better. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have played with those algorithms in there when you do the file size in large. There's actually a lot of options, and some of them aren't that bad. But don't bet on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's got spots on his nose. Yeah, so then I'll bring those behind his actual nose. And then um, adding a little bit of a shine to his nose really mm -hmm. helps kind of give mm -hmm. it that depth. Um, and I'll be using that same blue in his eye. Oh, yeah. So, oh, to do the shine? Yeah, so I'll just do a sense. little stroke for his nose. Now, Jeff wants to know about brushes at different sizes, but I think that goes back to what you were talking about, that the texture can change with the size, or there's a setting where you can stop that. So I think that's yeah. maybe what you're running into, Jeff. Yeah. Um, if you have the texture kind of locked to the scale, then it will scale with your brush as you size it, but sometimes you can... It's really frustrating, actually, when the texture scales with the brush, too, because I'm always making my brushes bigger and smaller, but I don't want the underlying texture to yeah. um, be different, so. Totally. So I think maybe that's what it is, Jeff, and that's something I didn't know until this, until Natalie has opened my eyes into the way that you use textures. It's so great. And we've got some questions about what you're using, which is a Wacom 22 HD Cintiq. And yes, she's using the Wacom pen, because I don't think there's any pens that work on a Wacom tablet other than Wacom pens. Yeah, um, I actually for years used just the tablet on the side. Yeah, like um, this, like yes. a good old Intuos. Exactly. Using one of those is great though. Um, I actually could never get my brain to work well with that. And really? it was so hard to like kind of see what I was drawing on screen, mm -hmm. but then it's kind of just this weird disconnect, but I definitely recommend like, there's so many tools out there too, especially like, even like tablets that have drawing, um, like iPad I know has Apple Pencil and it's really great. Yeah. Um, but just being able to see it, I think helps me a lot. It does. I do remember when I started on my Intuos, um, it took me a long time to get used to it. And so you kind of have to fight through, but I've seen some really incredible art done on a regular old Intuos like this. So it's possible. So if that's yes. all you can afford, it's not about the tool, it's about your art. Yes, definitely. And I, again, used mine for years. and. Yeah, made me too. a lot of good work with it. Too. Me too, me too. But having being able to draw on the screen is really nice. Yes, <laughs> I'm spoiled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is talk about my fur brush. Okay. Oh yeah, the fur brush. This is the last one. Um, no, we've still got second sound. to last. Second yeah. to last. Okay. So cool. It's funny. I used one brush for the whole thing, and then my two. Or for the last <laughs> for the fin finishing touches. Um, let's see. Well, that's good. So my oh. fur texture brush, um, what I'm gonna do to give him a little bit of depth is add another layer within this clipping mask. Yeah. So if I press uh, add layer, it kind of just automatically oh, puts it Oh, it's in already there. stuck inside there. Yeah, so I'll do dark fur. And I'll take this brush, make it a little bit smaller, and grab this darker black. Yep. And kind of just paint on, I have the flow set to 11, but bring up the flow and then kind of just brush Ooh, in his fur that. to add a little bit more texture. Oh my goodness, that's really nice. And again, like this is kind of three different brushes, so it's not like one brush that created this texture, it's kind of just layering yeah. and how you kind of put them on top and 
um, really kind of helps give it that more natural look. Yeah, it's got a total oomph to it now. And yeah. and that was the brush that you said Mike Yamada did, right? Yeah. So Mike Yamada is a Disney illustrator, and he's got brushes on Gumroad. Someone in the chat was asking about that as well. Like, yeah. um, you know, what what other brushes do you recommend? And there's a lot of incredible brushes out there in the world. Uh, so, you know, honestly, just take a look on the internet and, and see what's out there. You can get a lot of cool brushes. Cool. So now I'll do my second, or my last brush is a Whee! soft noise brush. And mm -hmm. I will use it to add kind of a little bit more texture um, and depth by taking this brighter orange. And because um, it's kind of a high contrast right here. I want to make it blend a little bit more. So I'm okay. taking that bright orange and in the layer between the white and the brown, yeah. I'm just going to start brushing in some of that brightness. To Shut up, that's so out. good. Um, Look see. how much that pops, that color. Yeah, so Holy crap. kind of just brings it with a little bit more depth. It makes him look like he's glowing a little bit. Yeah. Um, oh. And then just like kind of right on the border of where the color's changing. Yeah. And um, so you only do it on the edges there? Yeah. Wow. And then... Such oh, restraint. I would have wanted to <laughs> add it everywhere. I'd be like, ah! Um, cool. So I'm going to erase it. I went a little bit too far with this one. Um, so now I'm going to go back to the lines layer that's all black lines. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're gonna color the lines. And I'm gonna color those in with that brush. So very exciting. I'll do a new layer and again create a clipping mask. Okay, clipping mask. New the new hotness on this show. Yes. So um, for the black because mm -hmm. it's black, I'm gonna leave that alone. But for the brown, I actually ha will make this brown a little bit darker. Mm. So okay. take it down a notch, and then. Using that same brush, let's see if I have it selected. Yeah, I will go in and kind of paint in on top of those oh, lines. Man, so that... and the way it just melts in there as soon as you do it, like, oh, yeah. it's just such a good look. Because, you know, that harsh black is just not a good idea. And in fact, as an artist, you should kind of avoid harsh black as much as possible. Because it just, black is like your your last man standing. Like you don't want to add that until like you really know where, like where you want the eye to be drawn to. So, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, it's just so beautiful because now you really do want to look at his eyes or in his nose because that's where the darkest area is, right? Yeah. Instead exactly. of being distracted by all the line art. Um, so cute. Cool. And then, let's see. Uh, have one more thing that I need to do, mm -hmm. uh, which it's kind of a fun part. Uh, let me group this up to the lines. Um, it's kind of tricky because I have to take the body layer and add another mask. So <laughs> I'm going to copy this okay. and drag it down just so that I have it in case I mess up. Okay. So it's just, just your backup copy. Yes. So then I'll command click on my layer so mm -hmm. that I select all of it. Whoa, so you're selected all the pixels on that layer. And mm -hmm. that's why it's all like weird because there's some transparency. Yeah, stuff. it's a little marching ants that are kind of showing that it's selected. Yep. So then I'll make, I'll kind of hide all of these layers in here. And so it's just back to brown and I'll make a new layer. Make a doggy. And uh, let's see, make a new layer and then press this button, which is a layer mask. Layer mask. So once I do that, I have kind of, he's all hidden. Yeah. And then I go in with the fur texture brush and I will kind of start painting him out again. What? Uh, let's make this and and it, you, because you did the layer mask, it's only in the same shapes. Yes, as exactly. where his body was yes. that original drawing that you did. So all the texture is still there. So the that is super smart. Holy crap! Um, 
yeah, so you can kind of get a little bit more textury, fluffy feeling this way. That's beautiful. And this is your, we're almost done. We're almost, yes. can you believe it? To the end um, of our hour, <laughs> we're almost there, right? It goes like, by so fast. It does go by so fast. And that is super gorgeous. Okay, almost, and then. So what happens? The tail, you kind of fluff it out and don't go all the way to the edge so that okay. it has. Pro tip. So that it has the kind of fluffiness. Yeah. Looking, and then you can turn those layers back on. So what I'm gonna do is just replace, uh, remove these from that clipping mask by just dragging them out, um, and then putting them onto this layer. Oh wow! Create clipping mask, and then there you go. Holy crap! And then one last detail, I okay. like to take this eraser yep. and um, erase around the edge so there's not the stark line, so it gives it that really oh, yeah. soft so it's brush. so fluffy and you really feel that texture. Oh my gosh, well I'm gonna start my wrap up spiel. Yeah. You keep drawing, you can keep drawing if you wanna keep drawing. Yeah. So um, this was Better Know a Brush, our very first pilot episode here on Adobe Life. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed it, please, Tell it people. Tell people about Better Know a Brush. Use these brushes in your drawing. We've got two different things that you can do on Instagram. We've got Natalie Murrow here on my screen. You can follow her on Instagram. She's an incredible illustrator. So please give her a follow. And then also Adobe Drawing. So Adobe Drawing is the new place where we're gonna be talking all about art. And if you're excited about Project Gemini, definitely follow us because that's where we're gonna make any announcements. Natalie, thank you so much for being with me today. Absolutely. Seeing what you made was so much fun, and like you really know how to like work your brushes, girl. Great. Well, thanks for having me. It's yeah. been awesome, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> love to share. <laughs> Hope you guys had a good time. I know I did. So thank you so much. Get out there and use some new brushes, my friends. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>